good morning or good nearly afternoon. Welcome to our kitchen. Welcome to our babka bake. And um, it's Friday again. And you know, Friday is an incredible time. Friday is a time to be getting ready for Shabbat. I'm here together with Necha. Hey guys. guys. And um, it's an incredible time to be getting ready for Shabbat. And you know, I've been thinking about this especially now, now that we're in like the days literally just flow into each other. Is it Sunday? Is it Monday? Is it Wednesday? Is it Thursday? We literally, the, the sense of time that we're feeling right now is just so weird and so monotonous and so hard to know which day of the week we're at. And Friday brings that special touch to say, hey, Shabbat's coming. You gotta get ready for Shabbat. You gotta get into your kitchen, prepare some amazing stuff and get ready to really connect with, the, um, you know, with God, with your family and with those around you. And time is an incredible thing, incredible thing to be saved and cherished. As Rabbi mentioned in his Facebook Live earlier this week, that that's the first mitzvah we get in the Torah. This is the, this, um, that you have to mark your months, mark your days. Now, something very interesting that I was thinking about, which I, you know, which we learned, is all time is, has a cosmic reason. A day is 24 hours, which basically is the cycle of the sun rising, the sun setting, the moon coming up, the moon going down. You know, that's 24 hours. A month is based on the, the cycle of the moon growing and shrinking. A year is based on the cycle of the sun. There's one period of time that's not cosmically defined, and that's, um, and that's a day, and not a day, a week. A week, what, a week is seven days. And seven days is only because in the Torah, God said, six days shall you work. God created the world in six days and on the seventh day rest. And, you know, there have been many periods in history, the French Revolution, even in, in Stalinist Russia, maybe in Tsarist Russia, where they really tried to change that, to change the time, have a five day week, have a 10 day week. Ultimately, we've come back to the seven day week. It's the godly divine seven days of the week. So today's Friday, we're in the kitchen and it's time to cook. So on a Friday, we've been cooking, we always make challah and traditionally I've welcomed you all into my kitchen every first Friday to make challah with me. And next Friday, I will welcome you in for one last first Friday before Passover and we will make challah. But you know, I thought something fun, we threw out a, a little um, poll. Do you want to make challah with me or this week? Babka. And that was the winning, the winning vote was? Babka. babka. And yes, of course we have challah for Shabbat. And if you look back at my last Facebook Live from last week, you will see the challah recipe and how to do it, or you're welcome to text me and message me, and I will send that to you. But you ask, um, why babka? You know, one of the main, at Shabbat we sit down, there's so many traditional foods that we eat. There's the challah, there's the wine, you know, and you know, we have, but a very big part of Shabbat is the enjoyment that we have from Shabbat, the Oneg Shabbat. And so, always gotta make sure that whatever we're having, there's always good dessert. Ask my kids. Every night of the week, they, they, they never ask what's for dessert, even though they, you know, don't worry, the snack closet, especially once we're quarantining, has stayed open. But Shabbos, they know, the meal doesn't end without dessert. I've got my primary baker in house, and so we are thrilled, because between you, me, and the lamppost, I love to cook. Baking is like, I do it, but it's not my primary thing, but we've got the primary baker in house and she's gonna bake with us today, which is the best. So um, let's get rolling with this. Okay, so we're making babka. In the comments, I've posted, or will be posted now, or it was already posted, the ingredients you'll need, the recipe, the how-to and everything. There are three images being posted that you can scroll back and look at. I will talk pretty slowly, so that everyone has a chance to get what they need. I've got all my stuff set up here, but I understand that you probably have to go get an extra bowl, get a spoon, grab your rolling pin, but we'll make sure that we get everything. Great, I have a teaspoon here, but I do need a rolling pin. Okay, so the first ingredient is going to be yeast. Necha and I are each gonna be making a bowl because then when it comes to um, shaping it, we wanna be able to show you how to make traditional looking babka, how to make cinnamon buns, how to make raglach, so we're gonna have a little extra dough so you can decide which thing you would like to make with us. Anyhow, okay, so into our bowl is going to go two packets of dry yeast, and like most of you know, I buy my yeast in bulk. I like the Red Star yeast that goes at that Costco. And um, two packets of dry yeast is five and a half teaspoons. 
Into your bowl, you're putting two packets of dry yeast or five and a half teaspoons of dry yeast. Okay, so grab yourselves your two packets of dry yeast or five and a half teaspoons, can you do it for me as well, of dry yeast. Okay, let's get that going. Five, okay, oh, guys, I just touched my face, but that reminded me. I need to put on gloves. Actually, I haven't touched any of the ingredients yet. Now the hat is all gloved up and ready to go, which is great. Um, oh, the extra measures we gotta take to keep our loved ones and those we know and don't know safe. Okay, so five and a half teaspoons dry yeast or two, pack, two packets of dry yeast. Now on to warm water. Just like with Fala we we'll run the sink, run the tap, until the water feels nice and warm, you can put it on your, just like your, on your wrist right over here, feel the water under the tap and just feel that it feels nice and warm. And we're going to be putting in one cup of warm water. So into each, into your bowl that has two packets of dry yeast or five and a half teaspoons, is one cup of warm water. Make okay? sure it is not too hot because then it will kill your yeast. I told you my baker didn't help. Okay, now that, here we go. This is um, a cup measurer. Now it's gonna fill up both our bowls with a cup of warm water. Okay, go over to your sink, get yourselves warm water, and pour it into your bowl for your dough. A cup of warm water. Okay. Remember the, ingredient, the recipe is posted in the first comments. There is the recipe, the how-to, et cetera, in case you are, need that to follow along. Okay, so your yeast is in the bowl, and your warm water is in the bowl. Now for sugar. Sugar will help your yeast to proof. We're going to put in three quarters of a cup of sugar. Okay, so I've got my sugar here. It's an, an, okay, now we'll get that going. Um, three quarters of a cup into each bowl. One Okay. okay, all right. Give your bowl, give it a little mix, not too crazy, just a tiny little mix. I'm gonna keep, don't put the sugar away because you're going to need it for your toppings very soon. So I'll just stick it on the side and we'll bring it back when we need it. Okay, and the sugar, we're gonna let our yeast proof for a couple of minutes. And so just leave your bowl and we're gonna let our yeast proof for this. Watch it bubble up and let the magic start. Okay, so, um. If any of you have been following on every day, every morning, Rabbi Mandy hops on to Facebook Live and then on YouTube so you can get the link if you want from his email or um, WhatsApp messages, he sends a, a day. There you go. And in yesterday's daily Torah thought, he mentioned his great uncle, his my mother-in-law's um, aunt's husband, whose name was Ramendel Fotovas, who was an incredible Hasidic man, a businessman who lived in Russia, who was able to get many Polish passports to when they were letting Jews out for a short period of time. And he managed to get a lot of Jews out of Russia, even including his wife and children who went to England. But he himself got caught and was put into the Gulag, into Russian Gulag for many years. And it was obviously a very trying time, but he was an incredibly, a man of incredible faith and a man very dedicated to um, his Torah values and to Jewish life. And, you know, Rabbi shared about how when everyone else was so down and depressed and he asked them, why are you so down and depressed? He, they said, this guy said I was a big bank mogul and they, a big um, real estate mogul. I took away all my real estate, so I'm nothing. And another guy said I was a big businessman. I took away all my whole business, so I'm nothing. And then they said, but Mendel, how are you able to keep so happy and upbeat? He said, because I came in as a Jew and I still am. I have that deep faith and knowing what it is that can be taken away from us and what it is that we can retain and making sure that things that we want and need to retain are the things that are important. So um, an incredible story of Mendel is also related to this time period when he was in the Gulag and either it was while they were in prison, I think the story took place while he was still there, the people were, there was a, there was a, they put on like some kind of talent show and the talent show was meant and um, you know everyone was kind of sharing their little tricks of their trade what they did what they didn't do everyone was sitting around and one guy was a tightrope walker and everyone was so in awe of this guy how do you manage to be so high up on a string and walk across the world? and he was like a world famous tightrope walker and when Mendel 
pointed out something that, you know, we learn in Jewish life all the time, that from everything in life you have to learn a lesson. And the tightrope walker said, listen, obviously I'm high up and it can be very scary. Number one is you can't, I can't give into that fear. If I give into that fear and look down, I'm going to fall. But a very important way for me to know how to get where I'm going is I can have to keep focus on my goal. If I watch that goal, if I watch my point where I'm going and keep my eyes razor focused, it doesn't matter how high the string is, it doesn't matter how narrow and thin the, the rope is, I can manage to tread across and get across successfully. That's a very, and Mendel said, are you kidding? That's the most famous Jewish song we all sing. Kol ha'olam kolo, gesher tzar ma'od, v'ha ikar lo l'fachet klav. The whole world is a narrow bridge, but the main thing is not to fear at all. That the way that life is so fragile, and we've all been taught in the last little bit how fragile life actually is. We all thought everything was so predictable. We knew what to do. We knew where we were going. Everything was working out. And suddenly, our uncertainty has been shaken in a very real way. And how do we get across this? How do we navigate this? So we got to keep focus on our goals. Never and look down. Never look down, never be afraid, never look, never worry, don't, let, don't, don't give into the anxiety and into the fear, number one. And also know where we're focused, where we're going, what our goals are. Set yourselves goals each day, if they, you know, to take care of your family, to take care of yourself, to take care of your environment, to feel responsible, to stay home, whatever the goals are. And this way we'll get through this, this way we get through life. And the goal is obviously the Torah. Torah is our guiding beacon and light. And if we follow the Torah and keep our eye focused on bringing goodness and kindness and godliness into the world, we'll be able to cross the stormy war, war, or the waters of this world very um, well and easily. Okay, so back, thank you, Mendel, for that beautiful thought and lesson, which we want to learn. Okay, so our yeast has kind of proved a little bit. If you can't really see, see, but it's pretty bubbly. How much sugar? Uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar. I'm going to, okay, so I'm reminding you, you put in two, two, packets of yeast, which is five and a half teaspoons, a cup of warm water, and three quarters of a cup of sugar. Your, the recipe is posted and can be reposted again um, as a comment, which is a, it's a picture of the recipe, how to, etc. Okay, so now we're gonna, we gave our, our dough a couple minutes to proof, and we're going to add in our oil. Okay, how much oil are we putting in? We're putting in a quarter of a cup of oil. Okay, so grab your cup measurer, and a quarter cup of oil. Thank you. Quarter cup of oil into your bowl, grab your oil, grab a measuring cup, a quarter cup of oil. Okay, I'm also gonna save the oil because we're gonna need the oil again for our topping, so don't get rid of that too fast. Okay, um, and now, okay, we're gonna put in an egg. Now, something very important when it comes to cooking kosher and eggs. So, kosher law, we know you can, we don't eat blood. To the extent that we check our eggs to make sure there are no blood in our eggs. Okay, we live in America where most of our white eggs are pasteurized. But a lot of us are now using, you know, farm fresh eggs. You've got to check that there's no blood spots in your eggs. Blood spots are not kosher. Okay, so Nessa is using a glass bowl and giving a quick check to the egg to make sure there's no red spots in um, the yolk and then you know ready to use it so put one egg into your bowl okay Perfect. little light little hack over here a shell fell into the you can use the shell that you're holding the cracked shell to fish out a shell that got fell into your cracked egg but it's not working, not working. you got it okay perfect okay and an egg into Nepha's bowl okay and um, we're going to put in, so you've now put in a quarter cup of oil and one egg, and now we're going to put in a quarter teaspoon of salt. Um, okay, I'm going to put it into my hand, and I'm going to use like my half teaspoon here and just put in like half. I'm just going to estimate basically because there you go. A little bit of salt, like we've spoken, is the discipline in life. You need a little bit to bring out the potential, but too much ruins the food. Okay, and now after you put in your quarter teaspoon of salt, we're going to put in flour. Like I mentioned, when you make the challah dough, the same is true for babka dough. You've got to add your flour slowly because it all really depends on the altitude, the temperature in your kitchen, the temperature outside, all these things that, you know, are going on. How much flour you're going to need to bring your dough into a good dough. 
we're going to need potentially up to four cups of flour. I'm going to add two, start to knead it, and then slowly keep adding more and more. Now I'm just going to do the same. Um, I keep my flour in a big bucket here below, so you can get your flour out and start using it. Putting in two cups, I'm putting in two cups to start. I'm going to slowly start mixing it, and then very slowly add up to another two cups about. Okay, sorry. Okay, so two cups is my two cup measurer, and I'm going to, okay, Nessa's still using a spoon. I went right in with my hands, and we're starting to knead this dough, mixing it in, just like a salad dough. Yeah, your dough is right when nothing sticks to the sides of your bowl. Okay, mixing it up. Okay, this is, this is two cups of, of, of flour. I'm gonna now add one more cup. Okay, and now I'm just slowly adding. Actually, probably adding half a cup at a time now. I don't wanna add too much. If your dough is, too, there's too much flour, your dough is too thick and heavy. No one likes that. Okay, I'm gonna also be adding another half of cup. It's looking to me like probably about three cups is what I'm gonna need for mine. You might need a little more, a little less. Maybe three and a half cups. I'm not gonna end up using all four. I'm just gonna use about three and a half. Okay, keep kneading it. Clearing the sides of your bowl as you keep going. Okay. Oh, get both hands in. If you get the cleaner you get your bowl, the easier it is going to be to wash your bowl. So you might as well use all the scrapes and the more bath you're going to have because you're going to use all your dough for your bath. Yum. Okay. Okay, this dough is coming together nicely. I hope yours is as well. Knead in the flour. Try to get your dough as smooth as possible. Again, like the challah, the more effort you put in, the better the result when it comes to kneading. The same is with our families and with everything that we do, the more effort we put in, the better our result is going to be. Okay, I'm gonna just powder, I'm just gonna flour my hands here, just to give myself a drop of flour, but not gonna put any more on the actual dough. Just Mine is still a little bit sticky, so I'm gonna add some more. All right, so here's my dough. I'm gonna clean out my bowl a drop more. So that it can rise, not rise, but it can sit on the side for a few minutes in a clean bowl. Okay, take a drop of, a drop of dough here and I'm using it just to clean off the sides. Okay, so we've got a pretty clean bowl. Okay. If you'd like, you can put a drop of oil into your bowl, a drop of oil into your bowl, and take your dough and move it and just roll it in the flour so you've oiled the dough like this. So now you've got an oiled piece of dough in your flour and we're going to move this over to the side. Okay, I'm going to grab a towel, come over here with a dish towel. And mine's going to on the side. But it has the oil, please. Yeah. Now for a little oil. On the job. Yeah. There you go. All right. Okay, so while, what, what we're going to do now is we're going to put our doughs on the side. I'm actually going to just, me too, because I need to move my hair out my face. Okay. Um, and I'll put on fresh gloves. And we're going to, we're moving our dough on the side. And we're going to make the toppings and the fillings. So, there's two kinds of fillings. There's chocolate bafta filling and cinnamon bafta filling. You're gonna have your favorite. You might wanna make both. And yum, just saying, I love cinnamon bafta. But I do definitely have a lot of cho chocolate bafta lovers in this house. And um, some of my kids, actually their favorite dessert is chocolate bafta. When the, my big kids come home, we always try to make sure actually to have chocolate bafta in the house because. Shabbat morning, Saturday morning in this house, Shabbos morning is the best breakfast you could imagine. It's, a, it's actually an awesome family time. We all, you could come downstairs, there's sugar cereal, 
There's baked goods, cheesecake, chocolate, hot cocoa. It's a party Everything on Shabbos in the morning. So I usually like to have chocolate bar before my boys when they're home. But anyhow, so to end, my, my favorite is cinnamon. Anyhow. The lady has a big chocolate bar. There you go. Now he's giving all the family We're going to make a cinnamon topping and a chocolate topping so that we'll be able to use both. Cinnamon this one. Okay, I'll start with the chocolate filling. The chocolate filling is going to be a cup of confectioner sugar. If you don't have confectioner sugar, just use regular sugar. It's going to be fine. Yeah. And a third of a cup of baking cocoa and, and then half a cup of oil. We're going to kind of make a a thick schmear to put onto our babka dough. So I'm gonna put in a cup, so I'll talk, I'll talk through it so that we can follow. As you can see, everything in this house is a Costco size uh, ingredients. A cup of confectioner sugar. Okay, that's a cup of confectioner sugar. I might, and you might, you might need more filling as you go along. Then we're gonna put in a third of a cup of baking cocoa. What's this? A quarter. It's a quarter, I'll just uh, play around with it. Um, and you can use any brand cocoa you want. Someone had Hershey's, she had like a special Hershey's and a regular Hershey's. Honestly, any cocoa that you like to use is good. I just said, totally yeah, this is, the, for the filling, I, I feel like it's just too tasty. You like more sugar, you like more cocoa, you like more cinnamon, more sugar, it's all fine. Yeah. And for the chocolate one, we're gonna add the oil directly into the recipe, which is half a cup of oil. Okay, so I'll put in a cup of confectioner sugar, a third of a cup, of baking cocoa and half a cup of oil. So this mixture I'm gonna mix up. Okay, give us a, I'll mix this up. So if you want, this is the chocolate mixture. Now let's get in one this, second. Okay. Let's just mix this up in case people wanna make both. So then you can take over and do the cinnamon, but let's give them a minute just so we get both ready. Cup of confectioner sugar, third of a cup of baking cocoa, yum. And, and half a cup of oil. So for good. the cinnamon, we're not actually not going to put the oil in the bowl. We're going to put our oil on the dough also. We're also going to put oil on our dough for the chocolate, but more oil on our dough for the cinnamon because it's just going to be a sugar and a cinnamon. Okay, go for it. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. Okay, okay, so for the cinnamon, we're going to be doing a cup of sugar. One cup of sugar. And two tablespoons of cinnamon. Put that over there. And two tablespoons. Cinnamon, do you have a tablespoon by you? Um, I do. Here it is. Three teaspoons is one tablespoon. Get it down. Three teaspoons is one tablespoon. So this measure is a teaspoon measure, but yep, three teaspoons is one tablespoon. Okay. So we want two tablespoons of cinnamon. Okay, I'm gonna start clearing my counter here. We have one tablespoon and a second tablespoon. And that just be mixed together. Very simple. Uh, so good. I would grab a spoon. You have to give us the yummy. It's dirty. Okay, I'm going to grab something white just to wipe down the counter. You're going to want to have a clean counter to roll your dough on. And I'm just going to get something to wipe, but even though we still have to bake the topping, I remember. But don't worry. I could do that. But one second. Next, let's do the, do the topping. This is, we're going to put our filling on the side here. So now we have our doughs. We're going to get our fillings done. And then we're going to move on to our, prepare our topping, our streusel topping, just to give a little extra yumness to our vodka. So our topping is pretty simple. What you want to do first, or probably asking to be a little bit more because we're doing two doughs, but because we're, you guys are all doing one dough, the first thing you want to do is one cup of flour. Uh. And if you want a smaller amount, it's basically equal parts flour, equal parts sugar, and oil to make it crumbly. So we are doing a cup of flour. What was the last ingredient? The last ingredient. In what? And Ilana's asking. Ilana's asking, what's the Ilana, last? Ilana, yeah. In what? In, I don't know, it's, I guess. Can you re-ask the question, what's the last ingredient in what? The flour? Ilana asked the question again, and Jessica, I'll send it to you privately, the recipe. Okay, okay. you can get the recipe. So we did for our chisel topping, we so far did one cup of flour, we're going to be doing one cup of sugar. But you guys are doing half a cup of flour and half a cup of sugar. Sorry for the topping. We're just doing a double one here. So, but, but it's, it's like, like I said, it's equal parts flour and sugar and oil to make it crumbly. Then we're going to grab our oil and we're not going to, there's not really a specific amount of oil you want to put. You just want to put a little bit and start mixing with your hands 
And if it's too crumbly, you'll add more. And if it's, you add a little bit too much, you're gonna just add a little bit more flour to make it less crumbly. To make it more, yeah, less crumbly. Yeah, okay. That's so my here I, still very, very crumbly, so I'm gonna be adding more oil. Message Alana the recipe. Is there anything on this? Uh, Lana. Oh, Lana. Okay, Lana. Sorry, Lana. I keep adding more oil, and but it's still not so. We still want. It's still pretty floury, so we're gonna add a little bit more oil. Just add a little bit, and keep on mixing until you get the consistent, the right crumble consistency. I'm pretty much there. I'm adding a drop more flour. Oil and then I am done. Okay, Show them this the is exactly what you want it to look like. It just should, should be crumbly like this. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm gonna lift up the bowl so you can all see. Just like this, you want it to be crumbly. And then you're just gonna sprinkle this on top of your dough after you make a call. A call or a babka. A babka. Okay, so we're gonna start with the babka. Necha and I are going to share the two doughs. We'll start with one dough. We'll do the same thing, except one of us will make cinnamon raspberry chocolate. And then we will switch to the other dough and show you a different fun thing to do. Whatever. Okay. So you're taking your dough and dividing it in half. Take your dough out of your bowl and divide it in half. Grab a knife and cut your dough in half. Okay? You can flour your counter also. Let's do that. Oh, let's do that. Let's flour our counter. It's supposed to be enough of the baker's home. Thank God. And flour, yeah. flour your countertop to start. Okay. Share with face. Okay, life is happening in my house. Welcome to the sound effects. Okay. We're going to be rolling our dough. Exactly. Into a rectangle. So you kind of. This is for making bakka. Not like. Oh, it's, actually, you don't like cinnamon dough buns. I should make cinnamon buns? Yeah. Is it to make bakka or cinnamon buns? I'm going to be making cinnamon buns. She's going to be making chocolate bakka. Okay, so let's go. Here's a rolling pin for you and a rolling pin for me. Grab yourself a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, I'm sure everyone's got a bottle of wine, guys. Come on. So you, you, you grab it out of the recycling, throw a piece of foil over it, and you've got a rolling pin. Anything round in your house, you can use. And what we're trying to do is get ourselves a rectangle shape. About a, a quarter of an inch thick. Remember, the thinner you can make your babka dough, the more... Um, What's the word? Not space. You have for filling. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a math term for that, like a, you know, the space in the inside of it. But anyhow, um, just keep. We're gonna roll it out. Uh, depending on your your countertop, you might be able to turn it over. Make sure it's not too it's not sticking. If it is sticking, you might need to start again with some flour on your counter. Because then, when you're rolling with your topping, it's just gonna not come off and make a big mess. Okay, so roll it out. We're gonna. I'm gonna give you some time to roll this dough out because I want to make sure everyone has time to get their dough nice and rolled out. Okay, I'm flipping my dough. A little bit sticky, so we're gonna add more flour. Use your hand. Flour over here. Okay, we're going for it. Okay. I'm going to be baking my, um, my, my babka in a loaf pan. If you have a loaf pan, that might be the easiest way. But if you don't have a loaf pan, honestly, any pan you'll put it into is going to be great. And okay. I'm going to be making my cinnamon buns in a 9 by 13. Dorian is asking, only Dorian. rolling half now? Yes, you can roll, well, depend, yes, you'll roll, you're going to you divide your dough into two because if you just do your big, your whole dough as one, it's going to be too big and too thick and it's going to be hard to work with. So yes, I'm going to roll a second one for you afterwards. So roll half your dough. Everyone should be rolling one piece of dough. Thank you to our IT department for helping keep up with the questions. Dory, we're only rolling half the dough. And you can either with your half now, you can choose to make, um, you know the, reason, the reason why I'm not in the video is because I just come in for the eating part. And me and the kids, we eat the ragalach afterwards, after the bake. <laughs> I'm worry, just helping with that. Shabbos dessert. I'm just helping. Well, Friday pre-Shabbos is always good. I'm just helping with the IT. Okay, thanks, Rabbi. Um, anyhow, guys, I... The truth is, Necha and I could both be doing the chocolate babka first, and then we could do the cinnamon buns after. Okay, we'll both do a chocolate babka first. Yeah. That might make it simpler. Okay. Um, I rolled my dough up. Okay. Same thing, same quarter. 
Same for right. the same Okay. Thing. If you have a rectangle, you have you should have a rectangle on your counter now. And here you guys your rolling pin. Okay. Right. Roll it out. Roll it out. Okay. We're actually gonna be okay. Now we're gonna grab oil and an egg brush. Go get yourselves an egg brush, guys. I'm still rolling over here. I'm not doing this. Nope. Hi, do you want to come out of the video so they can see? Oh, oh. Nice. hi, Carol. <laughs> Anyhow, here is grab yourselves an egg brush. After you've rolled out your dough into a rectangle, we're going to oil the dough. Second, here we go, we're going to oil our dough. Pour a little oh. bit of oil into the center of your dough. Perfect. Oh, okay, uh, please note the difference between our two um, dough. Not much of a difference. Yeah. Okay, and you can spread the oil onto your dough to give it a good base. So take your oil, pour on a little oil, and spread oil onto your dough. Yum. Okay. If you want to be yummier, put butter. So good. But we're just we're doing keeping it par. No milk. No milk. This is a par recipe. Okay. Once it is spread, I realize that we're probably going to need a second recipe of this. So I'm going to take, I'm going to give Nafa this whole um, recipe of chocolate and I'm going to make another one. Okay, I'm going to make a second. Oh, one second. Actually, half is fine. Half, 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 guys, my mistake. Half. We should be able to do You'll half. see how much you need. Like, just put You might need to make more. You might need to, I guess. I took half. I realized that we're doing half the work. I'm going to use my egg brush, actually. And try to use your same egg brush or a spoon to start spreading this amazing filling, which is confectioner so sugar, good. cocoa, and oil, all over your dough. Okay, start spreading it. Yum. Spread the love. That my piece came off. Okay, we're having a little egg brush in this half. It's fine. It's okay. Yours. okay, keep. Okay, we're gonna spread it all over. The back of a spoon works equally good. Okay. Try and get as much of our surface. You want a lot of this, but when you put, because it tastes so good, when you put too much, it's gonna explode. As it, not explode, it'll just ooze out. Ooze out of your thing. Which yes. is also not so bad. <laughs> More chocolate, the better, honestly. Okay, actually, half a recipe is perfect for one half of your dough. Exactly. Half of the chocolate filling is perfect for half of your dough. And if you have extra cinnamon or chocolate, it can always just be put away in the fridge and used again. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I'm done over here. Okay, I'm gonna finish up now. Oh wow, yours looks great. Okay, awesome guys. All right, so this is how our our box is looking. Okay. I'm just my egg brush because I'm going to be again. Okay, you can rinse your egg brush and that one is fine as well, please. Yes. And thank God for gloves. We're gonna change. I'm gonna change my gloves. Okay. Fresh gloves. Okay. So now we're gonna roll like into a jelly roll. You're rolling your dough into a jelly roll. Okay. I'm trying to think if it makes more sense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll the narrower side because it's gonna go into a yes. Because it's gonna go into my a loaf pan. I want this to be the width of my dough. So this is. So I'm going to be rolling it. The, I'm not, the narrow side is going to be the way I'm going to roll it. So it's going to be thicker but shorter. That's my direction of my rectangle. Okay. And but you could also make it in a round pan and any. Oh, if you're doing a round pan. Oh, you can do any shape. A round pan also work great for this because. If you, you, or if you have a bump pan, then you have like in the middle. It just, like that. Like that. Okay, so we're going to start rolling it into a jelly roll. The dough is forgiving, the recipe is forgiving, the shape is forgiving, the taste is just amazing. Okay, start rolling it up slowly, piece by piece. If it gets a little sticky, flour your fingers a drop and that will help you lift it off the counter. We're rolling it up now, guys. Roll it up into a jelly roll. Okay, roll it, okay, roll, roll, okay, we're, 
I'm flouring my hands. So drop, flour your hands if it's getting, if it's sticking, so that you can lift it up from the bottom. Keep rolling. Okay, you probably got some chocolate residue with it on the face. If you had a little hole in your dough, no problem. Okay, so now it's rolled up like a jelly roll. Before we do the next step, we have to oil our, grease our pans. Okay, so let's take a minute, everyone, and grease your pan. You can use cooking spray, regular oil, something. Grease your pan, okay? Changing my gloves again, guys. Sorry about this. Okay, so if you grease your pan, take a few minutes to do that so it's ready for to receive the babka, which is about to be very gooey and gooey. Now you need a knife. Yeah. Go and get yourselves a knife. I did prepare a knife, but everyone else, go and get yourself a knife, a sharp knife, okay? And turn your dough to face you. Put the, long the, way. the long way, it should be in front of you. Lengthwise, okay. Do you have a knife? You want to, you got a knife? Okay, can everyone see me? Okay, so now I have a long dough in front of me and I have the knife. You're gonna slice all the way yeah. through your um, babka roll. Slice all the way through and that's what's gonna do it again, okay? Take your knife and slice all the way through from top to bottom. Don't worry if it feels like it's falling all over the place, it's ooey, it's gooey, it's the best. Yum, that's okay. You can have it Okay, so now your dough should be sliced down the middle. So now you have two halves and they're kind of together. We're gonna make like a twist. So you're gonna lift up the two bottom parts of your dough and you're gonna twist one, like an eight, two, three. Pick up the bottom part of your dough and twist. One, two, three, just a twist. Okay? And now the top part of your dough, you're gonna do the same thing. Twist one, two, three. And now you have a twisted braid on your counter. I like to pinch my hands. Great, pinch your hands. Thank you now for that tip. Now this is pretty messy. Lift it up and dump it into your pan. Lift up your babka roll and put it into your pan. Like mine should look just like this. Okay, here you go guys. This is what your dough should look like. And you want to kind of sew it like bakes better and the chocolate is everywhere. Just be okay. I'm going to move this to the side. Um, oh, it's topping my side. Okay, so at this point when you put the topping on, you grab your streusel topping. Should you know, we can egg wash it. You know what guys, I'm going to do an egg wash on mine. You can also do an egg wash on yours. I did not put that in the exact directions. But we'll, that will check the egg for us. You could also, if you want, do a like a maple syrup egg wash, maple syrup wash, which is just like a sweeter one. Yeah, and it's and it's not egg. I, mean, I guess in an egg-free recipe, you'd want to do that. And also, if you were running out of eggs, a lot of people are low on eggs right now, especially. So that's you another could good do option. Maple syrup, which is also really really gives it a shine. Okay, so we're gonna we're we gonna egg wash our um babkas. That's what you want. Egg. Okay, and then we're gonna sprinkle our crumble topping on top. We're not putting these to bake now, guys. You're gonna to wanna to give your babka probably at least half an hour before you put it into an oven at 350 to bake. The more the rise, the lighter and like fluffier your babka will be. So then let it rise for a while. And um, so Nash is saying a true point, I'm just gonna throw a little warning in there. If it over rises, it'll be sour dough. So give it some time, let it get nice and, let it double in size probably. And once it doubles in size, stick it into your preheated oven at 350 to bake, okay. So let's grab the topping. Hope you, if you egg washed it, that's great. Get your crumble topping that you had and just give a good, generous amount of streusel crumble topping onto your yummy babka. Let it go down the sides, let it go on the top. It's all gonna bake it together, okay. And this is what your babka should look like right now. Yeah. And okay. once it bakes, it'll be like double the size and huge and gorgeous. Okay, and remember, if you don't have a loaf pan, it could be in a bug pan, it could be in a round, it could be in a 9 by, th a nine by 13 aluminum pan, whatever pan you have, the size will be great. Can you get two 9 by 13? Okay. Actually, I was going to do it in a round pan, no? Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're supposed to do that in a round Okay, yeah, so, so in your hair. I'm crumbling in my hair and my whatever, because I've just changed my glass for a child in time. Okay, so now we're going to do your second piece of dough. I'm going to grab around. your second, yeah, I have a glove, I have this. I'm wiping down the counters for a minute, guys, and grab your second piece of dough, and we're going to start to roll it. Now you have a choice. 
Nessa is going to show you how to roll it into a cinnamon bun, which is again into a rectangle. I'm going to roll mine into a circle to make rugelach. So if you want to make cinnamon buns, you're going to roll it into a rectangle. If you want to make rugelach, you're going to roll it into a circle. So we'll have to take a little bit more time, but they're both very good. So um, we're going to round. If you roll your dough out in a round circle, you're going to get you're going to be making rugelach, and if you're going to roll your piece of dough into a rectangle, you can make another vodka like you just made, or you can make cinnamon buns or chocolate yes. buns. It's flour. It's flour. I count any fresh gloves. Okay. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to roll out our second piece of dough. I'm not sure how many of you are still here with us. This is a long Facebook Live. Sorry, guys. Okay, but it's so fun to be baking together. Okay, now, yeah. Okay, now. Okay, we're gonna cut our dough in half. I'm rolling mine into a circle, and Nessa's rolling her foot so, because I'm gonna show you how to make rugula. And I'm Nessa's rolling mine into a rectangle, so I like to just make it into like a little bit of a wall first, which makes it easier to get into the right correct shape. Okay, so I'm gonna start my circle. Growing up, we always, my, my, always had, we had babka very often, cinnamon babka was the one. Um, our amazing, I personally think cinnamon is so much better. <laughs> our amazing housekeeper, her name was Anna in South Africa, would make the babka. My mom taught her how to make that. It was definitely a treat. And let me tell you, I know how frozen babka tastes. We were always stealing it out of the freezer. <laughs> um, but when I roll this out, I think of her and I think of I send a blessing out to the whole world, to everyone in South Africa who's now in a three in a 21 day lockdown, so they can try and prevent the spread of the virus. Um, and so just thinking of the communities there and wishing everyone well and good things for everyone all over the world. All right, mine's okay. Quick. quick thing about your cinnamon buns. This, the longer you have it is the amount of cinnamon buns you have, the width is gonna be how big your cinnamon buns are. Just so you know how you wanna roll. Okay. Right, so that was our chocolate filling. So I'm not sure if all of you did chocolate filling or cinnamon filling because I'm not with you and this is not Zoom. This is you could also make chocolate buns by the way, totally. Fish. Okay. For the chocolate, we mix the confectioner sugar, the cocoa, and the oil together and use that as a filling, which obviously you can use for rugelach or babka as well. And for the cinnamon, we mix cinnamon and sugar and we're going to oil our dough very well and sprinkle that onto our dough. And that's how we're going to do the filling of cinnamon and sugar. Okay, mine's going into a circle and Nefa's is into a rectangle. Not such a great rectangle, but it's fine. You're rolling out your second piece of dough now. Okay. Either you're using chocolate filling or you're using cinnamon filling to make. Make sure it's not sticking to the counter like mine is. Because that's an issue. Sorry, we'll just pick it up a bit too far. Okay, now we're going to roll that down. That was important, yeah, guys. I also got a minute to flour your dough, flip it over if possible, and keep going. Okay. Alrighty, now at the side. There we go. All right. Nefa's gonna get going with making her cinnamon buns. Yes. In one minute, she's gonna get to all this out. Cause she think is not good. Put the manual. Nope. Let's roll it over this way. A little bit more that way. Let's the drop more, and then we'll be ready to start the cinnamon buns. Okay, here we go, guys. Hope all using a little bit of elbow grease to get these beautifully done and rolled out so nicely. This is your workout, so before you eat the vodka, you're going to work out a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with my cinnamon buns. I have an ish sort of rectangle shape over here. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's fine. And I'm going to start with just a good amount, good amount of oil all over my dough because I want it to just because our cinnamon doesn't have any oil. So we need to add oil onto our dough first, a lot of that. So I'm spreading my oil all around. I might actually add a little bit more. 
If you're using cinnamon, you're going to want to put a fair amount of, of, of oil on your dough because I'm that's a bit more really going to be the connector. Because our cinnamon is all dry, no wet. So we're making our dough pretty wet. Okay, now, I, do you want the oil? No, I'm going to wait. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do the same thing as Necha because I'm, I'm also going to make mine into cinnamon babka into cinnamon ragula. I will wait to show you how to shape okay. the ragula, but onto my circle, I will watch Necha. I'm taking my cinnamon and I'm just sprinkling it everywhere. And then you can sprinkle it over and then spread it around. Be generous with your cinnamon and sugar. You want a lot of that stuff. The so melted sugar is going to be your flavor. Let me grab up just my hand actually, and I'm just going to spread my cinnamon everywhere. I put a lot of that on and just keep on spreading it. Make sure you get the edges as well because you don't want to get that end piece of cinnamon butter that one that doesn't have anything so in it. That's so sad. Get <laughs> Like the food fries. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm actually going to add a little bit more, and if my mom needs to make some more, it's really easy to make. It's just cinnamon and sugar. So I'm spreading everywhere. Okay. So you can a little bit of a mess too, but that's okay. Okay. Now I'm actually going to switch my gloves quickly. You want to add cinnamon to yours? Okay. Echa's changing her glove, so I'm just going to cinnamon and sugar on my ragulach dough. Yeah. I'm gonna make a little more cinnamon sugar, guys. I would like a little more, and it's I'm running out. So. I, don't remember. I think yours is good. You can start rolling yours. I will start rolling mine. I'm rolling mine the same way we rolled our babka. The only difference is how we're cutting it. You could start rolling it into your jelly roll like this. You wanna roll it tight and neatly. I always start with one side and then I come back with the other side. Remember to keep flouring your hands and it's sticking yes. to the counter to help you lift it off. You don't want to make any holes. So keep on rolling your jelly roll. Keep on going. Okay, so now well, I'm going to get my pan and oil it. Oil your pan, guys. You can use I'm any jerk, any shape pan. Yeah, this could be done in any shape pan. You you could either do them as separate rug off, a separate cinnamon buns, and then you'll have like I'm doing a more of a pull apart one, but it's not going to be so it's not going to be all squished together, but it's more of a pull apart in a round pan. It could also be done in a square pan, really whatever pan you would like. Use your imagination, you know. Okay, then I'm grabbing my knife and I'm cutting mine into like inch. Okay, okay, but yeah, we'll start with half. Perfect. And I'm cutting mine into inch thick pieces so let's bring my down roll to that side and it honestly however thick you want them just all evenly sized so i'm going to start with one then i'm going to take this and use it as my measure for all the rest like this oh that's a good trick i never thought of that correct oh wow mass love it this one i'm actually going to make it to two we'll just make it a little baby one for me. Then you're going to be grabbing your cinnamon buns that are all spirally in the middle. And you want to, I'm, I'm doing a round pan, so I'm going to line mine up in my pan like this. Can you do your pan in the middle? Okay. Like this, just line your pan like that. Then I'm going to cut the rest of mine. One. I might have to actually put a little bit of a smaller pan because we're only doing half a thing of cinnamon buns. That's amazing. And then I'm going to line the rest of mine up. And even if you don't switch to a small pan, it's totally fine. By the way, if you find like if you have like there's a little bit of space, leave a drop of space between them. And as it rises before the cooking process, it will kind of fill in the space. That's only if you have like a little bit of space between them. If you need, otherwise you might have to put it into a smaller pan. We're right. gonna, I'm going to put it into a smaller pan, but like this in your pan to be filled up. And then they're all going to bake and be so gorgeous and yum. What you also want to do is spread with oil and do your curve topping. So I'm going to first gosh. grab, uh, yeah, spread with edge well. I'm going to first grab my smaller pan and I'll be right back. Okay, so while Nessa goes, I'm going to start with the rugula. So I have a round piece of dough. I've oiled my dough and I put cinnamon and sugar, or you can put it in a chocolate spread, a chocolate filling. Honestly, you can put any filling you want. You can put a jelly filling in, or anything else, however you like your rugula. with jelly and raisins. Different people like different types of rugula. Okay, you're gonna cut, I'm cutting my rugula, my dough, like a pizza pie. 
So first I'm going to cut into eight. Half, cut it like a pizza pie with your knife. Half. I grab a smaller pan and I'm just transferring my... So I've cut this into eight. And now I'm going uh, to double slice it. It's like when I go with the kids to the pizza shop, I always say double slice it. I get 16 slices out of this so that everyone, you know, little kids can finish their portion. So now I'm going to double slice it. So I'm going to end up with 16 slices in here. Double slice your pizza pie into 16 slices. Each of the eight are now divided into half. Okay, so on, on my countertop here, I have my round dough. I oiled it, cinnamon and sugar, and now I sliced it into double sliced pizza pies, so eight, and each of those in half. I also have prepared cookie sheets that I'm going to be working on. So, okay, here, so, so as you see, I'll finish up first. I'm not going to pick it up because this is going to fall over, but I added it into a smaller pan, and I left a little bit of space in between them. Now I'm egg washing, and then I will be adding some corn toppings. So also if you have babies and runs, you can watch, if not, just... My but also, Necha, um, just like the babka, we're gonna, you should be leaving your your, bap, your cinnamon buns to rise for the half hour. Okay. Before the so now we're going to make our rugelach. We have the flat dough. You're picking up the, the, the big end of your pizza pie and tightly rolling it in. And you're tightly rolling each of your pizza pie slices. Roll, 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 roll. Rugelach. Okay, so hopefully you see that. Okay. And... Okay, you want it to look like this. You roll it from your triangle into this, and then you'll make this little really cool rugged shape. Okay, put it onto your baking sheet, onto your cookie sheet, and go again. Now, once you've done that, you can come and help me. Yes. With your rugged up, you're taking the ends. I'm just sprinkling this over my cinnamon buns. This is honestly good over everything. You should add this over fall, it's just so good. The rugged up are not going to get a crumb topping. They're, they are going to be egg washed, um, but they're not going to get a crumb topping, just so you know. Um, okay, I'm gonna. I'm just rolling them up onto my cookie sheet, picking up the far end, the thick end of the slice, and rolling it forward. Okay, so now my cinnamon buns are done, and they're gonna go to rise in the basket. Okay, Nessa's gonna and step in over here to roll roll, roll, roll up with me. Okay. We're rolling from the thick end down to the skinny end. Well, this is a great activity with the kids, the rogalas, because you prepare the dough, get the filling, and get everyone to sit and roll with you. They do not love the rolling into a big circle, but if you get the beginning part prepared, this is a great activity to give the kids to roll the rogalas, and makes for a very fun, yum activity. Okay, we're rolling over here. Mom, God. You know what, you're going to help me later. Right now I'm finishing you're up the here. Kala later. Oh, we have to make kala. This morning Necha put up the kala dough. And um, in a little while we'll braid it, but it's rising now. And uh, all the actually starting for a lot. And we'd like, I, I love giving the kids, on the, you know, a little piece of dough. They can make their own kala and then get involved. Okay. Up here. All right, guys. Um, That's pretty much it. But let me just remind you a couple of things. Candle lighting time today is 6.47 and Shabbos comes out tomorrow at 7.49. About your baking. One, six, six. 6.47 is candle lighting. Tomorrow night Shabbat ends at 7.49. Okay, now yes. About your baking. Um, at 3.50 per your oven, these get baked for about 12 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes. The rogalach is 12 to 15 minutes. You have the rogalach, your babka is going to be baked for about like a half an hour because you want it to get like really full. And yummy. And your cinnamon buns about 20 minutes. But watch them if they but get watch it. Yeah, everyone's is different sizes, so it, it depends on how big yours is and depends on the oven. Yeah. Okay, guys, I don't know who joined me today, and I see lots of comments, I see lots of face, you know, lots of um, people on, on here. But share pictures. I'd love to see what you make. Post it to the live video. Tag us. Tag us. Or just email me the pictures, share your nachas. I'd love a little, my, seeing your dessert will be my little taste of your dessert. Shabbat shalom, friends. Hang in there. All the best. Bye. Bye, guys.